Yeah, thank you uh, to the two of you. And I just want to say on behalf of this committee, you know, we have a tradition of, of respecting the people that come before this committee in a bipartisan way. Make sure that, yes, we may have some disagreements about our policy, but all of us here are committed to our national security, committed to our service members, and certainly committed to recognizing that your leadership is a leadership across the entirety of our military, not just in terms of, and certainly not in terms of any political uh, discourse or political party. So I just wanted to thank you, all three of you, for coming before us today. Secretary Austin, uh, I did want to ask you, um, you know, I, I was, uh, as well as many others, horrified by the images that we saw coming out of Ukraine over this weekend, um, you know, what we saw in Bucha. Our militaries had extraordinary abilities to see where the Russian forces have been in Ukraine and where they're going. So I wanted to just ask you, do we know what Russian units were in Bucha uh, uh, that, that may have committed these atrocities? Well, we, uh, we, that, that's a thing that we continue to research, and there'll be a significant effort going into matching, uh, you know, elements that were present uh, with the time that these, that these uh, events probably occurred. But uh, we don't know for certain, but uh, we'll, we'll continue to research. Well, there's another element, too, you know, where we see these units being redeployed. So certainly we want to make sure that we're dealing with the accountability of this. But also I have real fear about where these units may now be redeploying, whether or not they will conduct similar types of atrocities against Ukrainians in other parts of Ukraine. So I, I just ask for your attention on that as well. Absolutely. With these horrific attacks, you know, we see there was redeployment of Russian forces as well, their apparent decision to pull away from Kyiv. Secretary Blinken this weekend said, you know, we may very well be entering a new phase in this war. I think that's something that I, I agree with. In my sense, it really does feel like where we're at now is different than where things were five to six weeks ago. But I wanted your thoughts on that. Does that sound right? Does this feel like a new phase in the war? It, I, I think that's right. I, I think, you know, as you know, the, the Russians uh, thought that they could very quickly move into Ukraine, capture the, the capital city, and, and install uh, their, their leader of choice. Uh, and they weren't able to do that. Yep. And so now we see them uh, reposturing and refocusing uh, their main effort in the south and east. Uh, and so as they, as they enter this phase, uh, it will probably probably be uh, a lot more deliberate. Uh, they'll be able to mass fires a, a, a lot more, and so the violence will will probably uh, go up in a, uh, a notch there in terms of the types of things we've been seeing. So on the Russian side, they are recalibrating, redeploying. You know, looking through your testimony uh, to this uh, to this body. You know, you talked a lot about the need for us to be changing and adapting the ways that we operate, adapt and fortify our defense, have resilience and adaptability in terms of our defense. So with this new phase of the war, with these shifting goals that we've seen from Russia, does that give us space to reassess what the Ukrainians need? As you talk about how we may see even greater levels of violence and firepower from the Russians, you know, does this give us that space to reassess what they need? Yeah, I, I don't know if I would describe it as space. I would say that we are, I mean, we consider uh, the Ukraine, uh, Ukrainians to, to be in a knife fight, and they are, yeah. they're working hard every day. We're giving them what they need to continue to be successful, but we well, need to also look ahead, and we're well, doing that. Well, uh, you know, the, the, they are in a knife fight, but they're in a, in a fight with all sorts of different weapons being directed towards them. I guess my, my more direct question to you is, if this is a new phase of the war, do you feel like there is space for you and the administration to reconsider, for instance, the, the fighter jets and the transfer, uh, facilitating the transfer of fighter jets to the Ukrainians? Is that something now that we're in a new phase that you would reconsider? If you're talking about the transfer of MiGs, I mean, right. countries have the ability to do that now. And contrary to popular belief, the United States is not standing in, in the way of that happening. But w w I agree with you on that front, but certainly, you know, the countries that we're talking about, they, they've expressed challenges in terms of how they transfer, they're asking for us to facilitate that. Is this a time for us to reconsider that? Well, this is, this is a time for us to uh, continue to focus on those things that, are, that will be effective in this fight uh, and even amping up, you know, the, 
the, uh, the capabilities that we provide them in terms of those things that are most effective. Well, I'd like to work with you as we enter this new phase to figure out what exactly we can do for the Ukrainians. Thank you for all your help. Yeah, we'll continue. <coughs> Thank you. Mr.